Venice is a city built on water, but for years its famous canals have been battling a growing pollution problem. Like in so many coastal areas, plastic litter ends up in the water, where it's incredibly difficult to remove. Here and across the globe, plastic pollution is putting natural ecosystems and our own health at risk. But what makes this plastic so dangerous and what can be done about it? In Venice's Grand Canal, researchers from Italy's Marine Sciences Institute peer through the murky depths using a multi-beam sonar, an instrument that maps the seafloor using acoustic waves. Noi abbiamo iniziato diversi, ormai dieci anni fa, a fare il primo rilievo dei canali e nel tempo l'abbiamo rifatto e quello che ci ha stupito è usando questa strumentazione ad altissima risoluzione abbiamo visto degli oggetti sul fondo, alcuni dei quali si riconoscono proprio perché hanno una forma molto, molto riconoscibile come eh, ad esempio dei pneumatici, delle casse. Car tires used as docking bumpers by Venetian boats are just one part of the problem. High tides sweep through Venice's narrow streets, carrying all kinds of waste into the historic canals, where it either sinks or washes up on beaches. Volunteers work hard to clean the islands, like here in Murano, but much of the waste remains hidden beneath the waves. Cioè, mentre è più facile raccogliere la plastica dalle spiagge perché è facile, si fa una passeggiata, si raccoglie, quando si deve andare in mare è tutto molto più difficile, o si va con i subacquei o si va appunto con il robot che le raccoglie. A robot like this one. Fantina Madricardo coordinated the European funded Maelstrom project. The team has developed a floating platform that relies on seabed maps and AI guided cameras to spot litter on the seabed and retrieve it with remarkable precision. Ed è importante che sia un sistema automatico perché può essere implementato su vari macchinari dove l'intervento dell'operatore è sempre più ridotto e può essere utilizzato in condizioni pericolose. The patented prototype offers hope for eventually removing tires and other litter polluting Venetian waters. Until then, the plastics will keep breaking down into tiny fragments. The research team trails a special net behind their boat, collecting samples that reveal the full extent of the microplastic problem. Le microplastiche abbiamo visto che possono avere diverse forme, quindi frammenti che derivano da oggetti più grandi come sacchetti di plastica o bottiglie di plastica, ma anche eh, fibre che derivano probabilmente dagli indumenti durante i lavaggi in lavatrice e anche dalle attrezzature da pesca. Each year we unknowingly ingest and inhale tens of thousands of tiny plastic particles. These microplastics have been detected in human blood, breast milk and even brains. They infiltrate our lungs, liver and other vital organs. Scientists continue to investigate the full health implications, but evidence of potential harm grows. Laboratory studies show that some of these microscopic plastics can damage DNA, disrupt hormonal systems and may contribute to cancer development. E su varie specie animali si è visto che le microplastiche possono causare infezione a livello di vari organi, possono anche causare ehm, risposte immunitarie e fungono da accumulatore anche di altri contaminanti che si possono trovare in ambiente. But how can we rid our seas of microplastics? The Ave River in the Portuguese coastal town of Vila do Conde faces a double challenge, plastic pollution and the invasive water hyacinth plant. Both threaten the fragile estuary ecosystem. But hope is bubbling up from the riverbed. The bubble barrier, tested as a part of the same Maelstrom project, creates a curtain of rising air bubbles across the river. It intercepts plastics and invasive plants before they reach the ocean, while allowing fish and boats to pass through freely. This uh, bubble barrier, what it's doing is really re getting the plastics that are in the bottom to come to the surface. And then using the river current, they are really directing 
the plastics to this um, container here that is catching all the plastics so we can then remove them out of the river. It's much easier to intercept these invasive plants covered in microplastic particles in the river before they reach the ocean. Pilot's tests show that the bubble barrier can catch an impressive 86% of debris flowing downstream, even trapping the smallest pieces of plastic. Scientists from the University of Porto are now analyzing the bubble barrier's impact on the estuary's ecosystem. Realmente poderá haver aqui algum processo de melhoramento, mas ainda é muito precoce tirarmos conclusões da qualidade ecológica modificada após a instalação da barreira. Municipal services remove the accumulated waste from the collector. The town of Vila do Conde played an active role in co-designing and co-funding the system. If the barrier proves effective, the municipality hopes to keep it running permanently and inspire other coastal towns to follow suit. Temos dias, sobretudo no verão, em que está mais calma, em que efetivamente a quantidade de, de microplástico é, é bastante elevada. E se pudermos evitar que ela chegue ao mar, claro que tudo faremos para, para isso. The energy used by the air compressor is partially offset by the solar system designed by the University of Malta. You don't need to keep it on all the time because there are times when there's less flow in the river. If we use it in that way, the amount of energy generated by the panels will completely offset the energy used by the system. Because of course we do want to collect the plastics, but we don't want to generate CO2 in the process. The bubble barrier in Portugal and the seabed cleaning robot in Venice have already retrieved tons of litter from the waters. But the scientists behind the Maelstrom project emphasize that cleaning alone isn't enough. They're working with everyone involved, organizing public beach cleanups, citizen science campaigns and outreach events. From factory owners to local authorities, from beachgoers to school children, everyone has a role to play. We need to continue to work upstream on prevention. We need to continue to try to change attitudes, concepts, and also to promote awareness and responsible choices. So we need to work with people, the community, but also with industry. In the end, the best solution is to prevent plastic from ever reaching our rivers, seas, and oceans.